Hi, and welcome to another repaint video. The people have spoken, and the next doll turned out to be the thimble. I decided to combine her with a fairy theme, so she got wings and staff and everything. I noticed this comment on the hats video, and yes, these are watercolors from Andrea or Nicole's dream. I used them together with a basic set of Faber and Castell. The Sakura Latte, together with Prussian Blue, makes the prettiest purple I've ever seen. She makes these in small batches and creates new sets from time to time. Right now I'm having Bora Bora and Plant Shop on my wish list, but they are great quality, limited and handmade, so they are pretty expensive. I was awake in the middle of the night to snatch this one called Coffee with Friends. I've added a black and white one, I didn't know where to put them, so they ended up there. Little did I know that I need to practice to get better, not just buy better equipment. That revelation came better late than ever, so I am starting to make small illustrations of my dolls. You can totally skip this part if it's boring, I won't notice and or get offended. Anyway, if you're interested in these watercolors from Nicole's dream, I've left a link in the description. I highly suggest following her on Instagram, her content is just... Plus she adds countdowns for her Etsy, which is nice. Like with this doll, I really would like to know which one to make next, so I've added another poll in the description. Click it and vote. Should I make that boot, iron, battleship or cannon? Some people suggested adding more tokens, and maybe I will, I don't mind prolonging this theme, so if you have a token you think I should add, feel free to let me know in the comments. I'll write them up and sleep on it. This is the first time I was happy with my line art, speaking about nothing in particular. I didn't line everything, I made little triangles where lines met, it made a huge difference. Following art advice pages on social media has its perks. So I decided on a fairy theme for the thimble and it's supposed to be some sort of sewing fairy. Hopefully she brings good luck and helps with the underthread, or she steals needles and brings chaos. Well this didn't turn out half bad. So let's get this party started. Persephone was the chosen one because of her grey skin. First I heat the head with a blow dryer and decapitate her before cutting the hair close to the scalp with sharp scissors. Then I use a flat screwdriver to scrape the rest out of the plugs. Finally I make an incision at the back of the head to easily take out the sticky hair chunks with pliers. It's as disgusting as it sounds. Then I remove the paint with 100% acetone, some cotton pads and a q-tip. It's always satisfying creating a blank canvas to mess up later. Then I figured I wanted to rearrange the ears, so I cut them off, trim them and glue them back much lower. It kind of makes them look like the ears of a super sad doe. I, I don't know, it's cute. I picked out these color pencils to guide me through the adventure. I had them close at all times, then I started with the hair. I wanted to give her two top knots in the shape of yarn balls, but I had a long way to go. First I painted a scalp, then while that dried I made a couple of wefts. Cut yarn, comb it out, flatten it down and glue it. Then while the wefts dry I rerouted. Here was my plan. I rerouted along the lines, made a hole in the middle and pushed the ends there. That way I gathered them all in two spots where the buns would be. It was tricky but worked out pretty nice. Nicely. The hair won't be changeable, but she's my original character, so that's okay. I am getting Leia vibes from this. This is the complete head rerouted. It looks so neat, and by that time the wefts had dried, so I peeled them off, cut the excess off, and glued them. She got some cute side bangs. I also tried giving her a heart line. Finally, I glued a weft facing upward, I also added some baby hairs on the nape, then again while that dried, I made the base for the yarn balls out of craft foam. This is the weirdest thing, and also the coolest. I wonder if silk clay is the same thing but cheaper one of these days, I will definitely do a test. It takes around 12 to 24 hours for these to dry completely, I edited this video so it makes sense. I glued and spun yarn around them, pretty neat. Then I added another toothpick and beads onto the toothpicks for them to look like knitting needles. And this is the result! Behold! Yarn balls! They'd just be in the way for the face up, so attaching them has to wait. Next I cover the hair, prime the head with Mr. Super Clear and use my airbrush to brighten up the areas around the eyes. I also added some light blushing. Then I thought lightning bugs are cool, so I made yellow dots before adding white acrylics to them. That way it looks like it's glowing. The second layer and I start on the face up for real, I draw the outlines creating a base. I had to be careful not to scrape off the airbrush paint. For the irises I went with blue and purple, which I think looked pretty. Then I drew the lashes. I filled in the whites before going in with black pastels on the eyelashes. I also worked on the crevices before making the eyebrows. Then finally I made them worried and the same color as the hair. 
some pink boops on the nose, pastels on the lips, cheeky blushing and pink inside the ears. And we're good to go on to the next layer. I work more on building colors, I create more definitions for the eyelashes, both upper and lower. Then more color to the iris and more black to the lashes to make them smoother. I also highlight the nose bridge and add some blue pastels underneath the eyes. Then some more nose booping and more color enhancing on the eyebrows. The fourth layer and I do the same thing all over again, I'm keeping this short. In the fifth layer things are starting to get interesting, I use soft pastels and some water to make freckles, adding them in layers with slightly different tones, variation is nice. Then I add some imperfections with a black pencil, I also add some blue pastels and blue veins on the temples, some small light ones under the eyes too. This face-up got 6 layers and it's finally time for some acrylics. As usual I use the Army Painter acrylics, brightening up the day. I added some iridescent foil pieces for some sparkle before I was happy, then I removed the tattoos on the body. Finally I can remove the cloth covering the hair and style it with my iron. I was going to cut the bangs but decided on a whim not to do so. Instead I just curled it onto her forehead in a cute messy hairdo. No regrets. I also gave her lips some Tamiya gloss varnish. I also modified the body a bit reducing the chest. I just wanted a more androgynous body shape and I was sculpting the top so there's that. I used two part epoxy clay to sculpt the thimble top, first you mix equal parts of them until they are a homogeneous color, then you can sculpt. I sculpted the top itself and then used a dotting tool to make the bumps. I also did this to separate it from the body since I wanted to glue a skirt underneath it, then I added some borders or something, I don't know what to call them. Finally, out of the rest, which was quite a lot, I made a crochet hook. Then I gave her some fancy tattoos, a spool of thread, a pair of scissors, some safety pins, buttons and a sewing machine. It was incredibly challenging to work on these tiny arms, you have to twist and turn and take it slow one step at a time. First I sketch with watercolor pencils, spraying with MSC to save the progress and build colors, then I move on to some highlighting with acrylics. And this is the result. I'll show more in the pictures at the end. I then proceeded with airbrushing the top with silver plate metal. This way I don't get brush stro brush brush strokes. That is really hard to say brush strokes. Jeez. I also made this tiny spool of thread with a toothpick and my glue gun. It turned surprisingly cute. Then with a nail art piece and a ring, I attached it to the top with super glue. Then I went back to my watercolors, I wanted to give her wings and follow this instruction. First you paint them, then print them on regular paper, making one mirrored copy. Here I'm using Fontaine pen ink, it turns really cool with watercolors. Here is the printed version, unfortunately the colors aren't as great as the original, so I'll mix with the exposure if I do this another time. First I cut them out before I glue pieces of wire to them. Then I painted the backside with two layers of gold acrylics, it didn't matter that some of it got on the front. After that dried I painted the front and back with liquid Fimo, some drops formed which was fine for me but they need thinner layers of this stuff next time. Then after baking them I use a piece of foam and a dotting tool to give them some texture and shape. I also made and painted some loose wires, finally I could attach them all, I learned a lot during this process and I know many things I'll do differently next time, for now though. These turned out beautiful. I made my first pair of fairy wings. 
Next was the skirt. I didn't have any fabric with prints on, especially doll sized prints, so I used some lace, some random amounts of red and blue paint and my airbrush. I love the effect and will definitely do this more from now on. It looks so organic somehow, then I cut the fabric into smaller pieces, laid them out like a puzzle, glued the edges and hand sewed them. To make it more interesting I also hand painted with some white acrylics. It was very subtle though. Then I cut a circle and glued it under the thimble top with super glue. I usually try to make clothes detachable, but I just couldn't, creating the top and everything. Let's recapitate her. I make three incisions inside the neck hole and cut the neck peg to avoid the face up cracking. And this is what we got so far, minus the yarn balls. To make the skirt look less new, I used some brown pastels at the seams. For her to make her magic, she needed a staff. I didn't have any sketch for this one, I just added things as I went along. I started making the base out of epoxy crochet hook and a wooden dowel. Then I sanded it a bit before painting the hook with silver plate metal. The wooden dowel got a coat of light pink acrylic paint. Then I added some faux leather and rope for decoration. I never used the thimble that I have, so I made a bell out of it. First a hole through the top, then I used a string and some beads and super glue. I wanted to make more of them, but I only had one real thimble and I didn't want to sacrifice the token. Little did I know that this was going to work. For some more decorations I glued a piece of ribbon on the staff, then I added an elastic band thing for the hand. Epoxy is rather heavy, so she needed it to be able to hold it securely, then I made this cute little thing for the thimble bell. And there we have it! Maybe I should have warned you this was coming. To attach the wings I drilled a hole in the back and used my glue gun. In the end I hid the wires and such and the glitter and the golden butterfly, but first I attached the yarn balls. I wanted them secure so I used a metal pin thing and more hot glue. I love adding the details, filling out empty spaces and going nuts with miniature decorations. These mini thread spools are so cute. I cut them in half, painted them and added strings and glued them onto the skirt. She got socks instead of shoes and again I used more brown pastels to make them look warm. Finally I added glitter glue. Like the hat, she got herself a custom Monopoly stand. I measured this two part fast curing resin that turns white after curing, then I mix it until it's clear and pour. From now on I'll be making custom stands for all my dolls. While that cures properly, I glue the top part of the printed Monopoly board. The intention is to seal it so it doesn't turn transparent in the resin. Next I added a string with a needle and some beads as decorations. Some mirror descent foil later and we have this. After drying I cut the edge and peel it off, then more glue on the back side before I place it onto the white resin. On top of that I used clear resin. This is also a two part resin, but you mix it two to one. To avoid dust getting into it, I place a plastic container over it while it cures, then after 24 hours I drill a hole and glue a piece of wire into it. I then demold and cut the edges with my X-Acto knife and then sand it with my Dremel. Sanding makes the edges smoother, but I then need to glaze the top with more resin since I don't have finer grain sandpaper.
I bent the top of the wire in this shape and as you can see the pink plastic has been nicked in the process, plus I think it looks pretty harsh, so I cover it with pink yarn. I made this pink velvet disc and glued it underneath, but the gap between the disc and the white resin was too big, so I added a pink string. I love how mistakes and imperfections can be turned into something pretty, and well, this is the result. My fairy thimble is done and she is so cool. I got to try out a lot of new things, making wings and painting fabric. Next time I want to do some more embroidery, I think. But that depends on which token I create next, so please head over to the poll and vote. Help an indecisive person out here, please. Now I'll make her familiar that will follow the color scheme and fairy theme. Again, that one will go to my Patreons. As we're speaking, Pen is on his way to his new home, Mars has arrived at their new home, I've gotten the question of selling these Monopoly dolls, and I will be putting them up on Etsy when I'm finished with a complete series. I want to thank my Patreons, you guys are awesome, and I hope you'll like the next little familiar. I've already decided to name him Tim, and uh, he'll be a little fairy familiar, so... Fairy Wings 2.0, here we come! So this is what I started with, and this is the result. I love how the yellow dots look, like they're really glowing. And the tattoos, the staff, the dress, I am so happy with the result. Thank you so much for watching the process, I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe for the familiar and the next repaint, vote for which token you think it should make, and have a lovely day, or you know, evening, depending on when you're watching this. Until next time, bye!